Father in heaven, we bless you for your word, Jesus, for your unbelievable power. Thank you for getting us ready for the Feast of Trumpets, for your coming. Lord, we know you are coming. You're coming soon. Sanctification prayer. As we were in worship, I was reminded of it. And it goes like this. This was of the, uh, instituted by the men of the Great Assembly, early Second Temple. And it deals with the holiness of God. It contains several prophetic scriptures. And as Leanne was getting ready to deliver Elijah, first home birth after C-section as we were in prayer all of a sudden um, all of a sudden it's uh, just something in me just set apart the place for um, for um, I guess holiness <sighs> Ki shem shema tishim, ho ho to ho ho, beshimehe he marob. Kakatu val yad me vieha, e karazel ze, ve aha ha ha ma. Kadosh, 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 Yahweh tsevaot, melocho haret, evoho do. E yumatom. Baruch Yom Eheru, Baruch Kevod Adonai, Mihim Komo. Mihim Komo Echol, Malkinu Tzofia, Betimloch Aleinu, Ki Mecha Ki Hib, Anahachnu Lach. Matahai Timloch Betzion, Bekaro Beyomenu, Leolam Vaet Tishkon, Tihid Gadal, And it goes like this. We will sanctify your name in this world, even as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by your prophet. And they called to each other saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Those facing them say blessed. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his abiding place. From your heavenly abode, you will appear, O our King. Woo! And reign over us, for we wait for you. When will you reign in Zion? Soon, even in our days. May you dwell there forever and ever. May you be exalted and sanctified within Jerusalem, your city. Jerusalem, the dwelling of peace. This is supposed to be the dwelling of peace. And I will get on to the message, guys. Romans 12. Okay, we're going to go to Romans 12. Zion is that parched land. What is the parched land? That is the dwelling place of God. The dwelling place of the Lord is when you are stinking empty. When you are empty, you have nothing of yourself. When you say, God, I can't do this. Do you guys understand? I can't raise you children. 
I can't be a good friend. I can't do it. But I know who can. Do you guys understand that we are living in this world according to this world's government, according to this world's resources, according to this world's conforming? Guys, there's a battle raging for you. Do you understand that your thoughts are not your thoughts? Do you understand that what you think and the things that come out of your mouth are not necessarily yours? And unless you are born again and transformed, you're going to speak filth, period. Mm, amen. There is no middle ground. That's what the devil wants you to think, so that you won't fight him. 1 John 3, 7, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. What are you doing? Are you participating with the devil? Or are you going to destroy his works with Jesus Christ? How? Through your words. Through your heart, through your actions. Are you critical or do you give grace? Are you judgmental or are you are giving? Are you transformed by your words or do you conform to this world's attitudes like gossip and slander and libel? Do you want to go and participate with everybody else and refuse to obey and pray for your leaders and fight fear with faith and don't get into those conversations? Oh, well, it's the coronavirus this, or we should get guns, or store up for this, or, well, I'm, we're going to do this, and political advocacy. What about Jesus Christ? What about proclaiming his name? When you give him Jesus, everything falls away, and there will be change. Do you understand his holiness is what conforms us to his likeness? Do you understand that his holiness is fire? May our eyes... Okay, Jerusalem, your city. From generation to generation for all eternity. May our eyes see your kingdom. Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. But yet this country claims itself Christian. Where are you? Who is on the Lord's side? Or are you just calling yourself a Christian and doing, being nothing for him? What does he say? May we see your kingdom as it expressed in the songs of your might by the hand of David, your righteous anointed. Jesus is the son of David, the righteous anointed. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God will see on from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Romans 12. All oh, that was free. That was a teaser. Therefore, brothers, 12-1. By the mercies of God, I you. My little children, I beg you. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Let him change you. Verse 2, do not be conformed to this age. Guys, what's out there is fear. Everything outside there is fear. It wants you to be concerned about the vaccine. It wants you to be concerned about the political situation, about the fact that the food shortages are happening. It wants you to be concerned that people are struggling with work. They, they bicker and fight and gossip and sex and drugs and video games, fidget spinners, criticism, slander, pride. What I want to do, I want to get the best life I have. Eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. Do you understand that your life is not your own? He says, don't be conformed to this. The Hebrew word there is dol. Dalit vav resh. Dol. Generation. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern or in some translations, test what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. My blessed wife said this, when your mind is trans transforming, it is not painless. What is your mind? It is your, everything that deals with your mind is your mind, your, your emotions, and your will. What happened to Jesus? What was the only thing Jesus had to learn here on earth? He was perfect, except one thing. What did he have to learn in his flesh? 
Yeah, but... Marvin. Philippians 2. He had to learn one thing. Obedience. He had to learn to obey. He had to learn to obey. And if he had to learn, how much more so you? Guys, it is painful when you are transformed. There are times it floors you. And you can't seem to live in your flesh, in your body. Use that time to pray. Use that time to cry out to Jesus. And to submit. Let submitting to the Lord Jesus Christ be your anthem. Not I, but Christ. Let that be your call. Let that be your sanctification. Nobody wants to hear the message of holiness because it requires everything. Why? Because you will see God if you pursue holiness. Hebrews. Guys, let it happen. Stop fighting the process. Let, I love the word ekbalo. You know what it means? Vomit. Perfect love casts out fear. In the Greek, perfect love, ekbalo, fear. Perfect love will vomit it. Sarah said to Abraham, that the word there in the Hebrew, from Greek to Hebrew, um, from Hebrew, excuse me, Greek to Hebrew, ekbalo, excuse me, ekbalo, to Hebrew is garash. That means divorce. Sarah said, she didn't say divorce, but garash, vomit that slave woman from me. She didn't, she didn't even use her name. Look at Genesis. Ooh, where Sarah kicks out Hagar. Don't remember it off, off, offhand, but where she says, cast that slave woman out of here. Go to Galatians. Cast that slave woman out of here. Ekbalo. Vomit her. She disgusts me. That's how we are to be with flesh. That's how we are to be with, with, with our necks that are, not, that are stiffened. Proverbs, whoever stiffens his neck, to reproof will suddenly be broken beyond healing. Greatest prayer we've ever seen was the revival of Wales. Evan Roberts, bend us so God like a reed and not like an oak. Bend us, bend us, don't break us. Children, be bent. Be bent. Be submitted. Let God's fire consume you. You get irritated, let him burn you till there's nothing left. Let him consume you because that's the cross of Jesus Christ. We don't like it. Why? Because we've aligned ourselves with the devil from the beginning. From Adam we did. It's in our flesh. That was the seed of the knowledge of good and evil. We can't have mastery over it. How? Laying the shelf bare. And allowing the reproofs of the Lord in our circumstances to always come upon us. And say, Lord Jesus, I submit to this. This is not my will, but this is yours. And I will embrace the cross. I'll embrace this difficulty. I'll embrace the change. I don't care what it costs to me. I want you more than anything. Give me Jesus or I die. Is that your call? If it's not, I fear for you. Mm. I fear for you. Mm. Are you holy the Lord's? And if you're not, God help you. Because if you're screwing with the world, you're, you're an enemy of God. Mm. Period. It is just that simple. Amen. If you are not willing to be transformed, if you are thinking along the way that this world thinks, if your mind is not completely on the Lord, and it's a process. See, that's the thing. That's the sneaky thing. It is a process. There is grace. But grace is not free. Somebody had to pay for it. And it was paid for with blood. Blood that was meant to be yours. 
on that cross. But the one who made you died for you, Jesus Christ, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And if you will not submit to him, God help you. Because in the end it says, every knee will bow. In heaven, on the earth. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. The word there, kurios, is Yahweh. He is Lord. He is Yahweh of all. You can bow the knee now, willingly. There, and I'm not just talking about initial salvation. I'm talking about a daily, 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 by the mercies of God, I beseech you, brothers, lift up your, present yourselves daily, 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 every day. In the morning, in the evening, at lunch. When you're facing a situation, I don't want to get out there. I don't have the energy anymore. I can't do this. I don't want to be there anymore. I want to just be in my bed. I just want to be in my job. I, you know, it's much easier to just stay at work than come home and have to deal with this. I'd rather do that. I'd rather do it because it's, it's I don't like it. I don't feel good. Tough. Didn't feel good to Jesus die on the cross. Didn't feel good to get splinters all over his flesh ripped open back. He did it for you. He did it for me. Guys, receive his love. He did it. Because he says, you're worth it. Every one of you is worth it. Every one of you is worth it. And I'll do it again. Praise God. It's over. Why? Because he says it is finished. Claim it. And say, okay, Lord, I receive it. If you went through it, I'll go through it too. Amen? Amen. Father in heaven, thank you for your word of holiness. To call us to greater. To call us to higher. Jesus, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves. Father, your will. Your way. We love you. Jesus, we want to take up our cross. Don't let us go away from things like inconveniences, even in our home, even in our household, where children don't do what we feel is important, where circumstances don't line up where we want. Father, forgive us. Let us daily lift him up to you. I'm sorry for myself and my sin where I get angry and short. I'm sorry, oh Lord, for our nation. I'm sorry where we are so laden with fear. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Holy Spirit, forgive our sin. Forgive our land. Father, bring us revival or please we die. Jesus, please, oh God. Let it be the year of your favor now. 2021. And, and Feast of Trumpets, let Yom Kippur this year, Yom Tov on the feast this year, bring a, a judgment of breaking where now your holiness comes. Let the celestial powers be shaken in Jesus' name. To bend the knee. Amen.